Hey, my name is Scott from Birdwatching HQ, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to use eBird, which is a tool online to help figure out when you should take your hummingbirds feeders down in the fall. So first, let's go to eBird.org. So a huge question, popular question I get every single fall is when should you take your hummingbird feeders down? You don't want to take them down too early just in case there are hummingbirds that are migrating through your area later on that might really appreciate some nectar because especially as flowers start going away and nectar sources start disappearing for them. So we're at eBird, so this is cool. So what eBird is, is an online database of basically of bird sightings. It's a citizen science project where people upload what birds they've seen, where they saw it, what time of year, those sorts of things eBird compiles that data, uses it for a lot of things, but for us, we can use it to see exactly where hummingbirds are as they're migrating south in the fall. So again, went to eBird.org. From here, you're gonna hit Explore. Now, it will prompt you at this point to create an account if you don't have an account, which takes about two seconds. Um, but once you have an account, it'll take you to this page, and we're going to go to Species Maps where we can explore interactive range maps by species. Let's go to species maps. And now it's gonna show a picture of the world and I'm going to search for the species I want to look at, which in this case is a ruby-throated hummingbird. So I live in Ohio. It is The ruby-throated hummingbird is the only species that we get. And for us, and really for, this is the range, this is all the sightings of the ruby-throated hummingbird, for the year. It's most of the, pretty much all of the Eastern United States, Southern Canada, and even up into, um, kind of goes up this way toward Alberta. For most of us, it's the only hummingbird we're ever going to see in our backyards. And they migrate northward in the spring to spend the summers here to breathe. And right, you know, usually during September and October, they are migrating south back to Central America to spend the winter. So this is all, all the purple you see are people's observations. Once they saw one, they uploaded where they saw it and we're looking at it. Now, and you can see over here, the darker the purple it is, the more concentrated the hummingbird. So, you know, you can see it's seen everywhere. So we need to go through this data to kind of show you how it helps us. So what it's shown right now is all, basically all the data that's going on for the hummingbird. We need to go here for the date and we need to filter this for the dates we want to look at. Okay, so I'm making this video in very early September. So it's a little too early to see this year's migration map and where people are seeing their hummingbirds at for as they move south because they just honestly haven't started migrating yet. So what I'm going to do just to show you what how you can use this is we need to mess with this date. So I'm gonna go to a custom date range and go to, let's just say September and October. Now the problem is I, I can't do the current year because again, I'm making this on September 1st, so there's no data yet for September 1st. I'm gonna look at last year's migration maps or last year's data. I wish eBird had a, you could edit this a little bit more where you could see exact dates, but again, the months work fine. We're gonna look at September and October of last year, and that's gonna show us where people saw ruby-throated hummingbirds um, last year. All right, now it's going to give us this map. Now, from here, I want you to zoom in on where you live. So, once again, I said I live in Ohio, specifically Northeast Ohio, near Akron, near Akron. And as you zoom in, instead of all that pink, it's going to show you where individuals have uploaded their observations, all of these blue markers. So, let's pick this one. If you click on it, it's going to show you the name of the observer and the last time they saw it. So this is neat. This is in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. And the last time the ruby-throated hummingbird was seen here was on September 14th. Let's look over here. September 12th. September 5th. So you can start seeing September 15th when the hummingbird, you know, there's nothing, uh, the latest, latest I've seen is September 15th. That's showing me nothing, no hummingbirds have been seen in Northeast Ohio after that date. So typically we give, I give the advice that you're supposed to leave your hummingbird feeders up two weeks after you've seen your last hummingbird. 
Well, sometimes you're not at home when they're there. You're not really sure when the last hummingbird came. This can show you where people are seeing them. You know, if you go on here and see nobody has seen one in two weeks anywhere in Northeast Ohio, you have a pretty safe bet when to take down your hummingbird feeders. Yeah, so you can kind of see most people saw their last one in mid-September, which in this area, that is spot on. I usually, about September 15th for us is when we typically see our last one. I usually leave mine up till early October, just in case any migrating hummingbirds are coming through. Now, let's just, to show you, let's go north a little bit. Let's just go into northern Michigan, or maybe southern Ontario here. Typically, the more north you go, the earlier hummingbirds have to leave to get back. So this September 3rd, September 9th. Oh, this one's a little bit later, September 20th, September 8th. So you can see overall, these dates are about a week earlier than the last date seen in Ohio, which makes sense. They had to leave Ontario to get south before, you know, to get back in time before the weather gets too cold. Now I'll show you if you lived in, let's just say you lived in Atlanta, Georgia. We could go down to Atlanta and go, all right, when do I need to put my feeders away in Atlanta? It's going to be later than Ohio and Ontario. One, it's warmer in Atlanta and stays warmer longer, but all the hummingbirds have to pass through Atlanta. So look, September 27th, October 1st, September 28th. I think you get the picture. September 25th. If you live in Atlanta, you know, if you're last, if you're looking, okay, you know, someone, Susan saw uh, October 1st, someone, you know, hummingbird on October 1st. So usually wait about two weeks after that. So you could use this map in real time. Again, I'm just too early to use it, but if you're using it this year, you would just change this to current year. Let's say you're using this on October 2nd of 2021. Do this, September, October, current year, and you can see everyone that's seen hummingbirds before you. Are people still seeing them around? When's the last one being seen? So you can, you can gauge when to take your hummingbird feeders in or not in. So hope that helps. eBird's an awesome tool. This map can also be used what's neat in the spring to see when hummingbirds are coming back north. As people see them, they'll upload their observations and you can follow right along when they get back to wherever you live. Now, when you should take your hummingbird feeders down over on the West Coast doesn't apply as much because all of you lucky folks in Oregon, Washington, California, Southern Texas, Arizona, you have hummingbirds all year round. So this probably isn't gonna apply to you. But for most of us that live all over here, we only get hummingbirds in the summer. So this is really helpful to know when we need to take the hummingbird feeders down. All right, once again, this is Scott from Birdwatching HQ. Hopefully that was helpful today. If you like this, make sure you subscribe and like the channel and make sure to check out my live bird cameras that are streaming from my backyard. All right, thanks.